Welcome back to part three of this tutorial series where we're taking a look at some Angular JS code. If you haven't already seen the first two parts, go back and check those out. But for now, in this video, we're going to take a look at grabbing hold of some JSON data, inserting that into our HTML, and then creating the bootstrap markup we need to display everything nicely. So continuing on, in this video, we're going to build out the markup for each of these little information boxes about each turtle. So to do that, we need to pull in some data from somewhere and then print it out. So typically how this would be done is you would pull it from a backend API endpoint. But this series is just about the front end Angular implementation. So we're just going to mock this data by pasting in the JSON directly into our file. So coming into our controller, I'll just come down here and paste in the JSON. So this is just a, a variable. I've called it turtles data and it's just some JSON. So it's got some objects and each object has some properties, type, image, URL, location, size, etc. And we have this for each turtle. And now we can attach this variable into our controller just like we would if we'd received this from an HTTP request to an API. So we'll come into the controller. One thing I am going to change right now is using this all the time can get quite confusing and you can get yourself into some trouble. So I'm going to set this equal to a variable. So I'm going to call that variable VM, which equals view model, stands for the view model. And then we'll set that equal to this. And anywhere we see this, we just replace it with VM. And that just keeps us out of trouble. So we can actually delete this line for now. Then we can write VM.data equals turtles data. So that turtles data, no, it's turtles data, is this JSON. And then we're attaching that to a property called data on our view model. So now we have access to all of this JSON within our HTML. So we can come back into our HTML and I'll now demonstrate the ng repeat directive. So what the ng repeat directive is, is it allows us to define some markup once and then tell it to repeat that markup for all of the data that we have. So I'll create a paragraph and then in here I'll give it the ng repeat directive and set that equal. And then in the equals we want to give it an alias and then the data we want it to loop over. And then the alias will be the name that we can reference for each iteration of that loop. It's very like for each syntax if you've ever used that. So we say turtle is what we're going to call each iteration in list because we're in the list controller dot data because so list dot data is a property called data on our list controller which is this which is our JSON so loop through list dot data and on every iteration I want to be able to reference that data by using the keyword turtle and now we can simply just print out all of the JSON by using our binding and then just print out turtle. Notice here we don't have to actually say list.turtle because turtle is already a reference to an iteration of list.data. So now if we save that and save our JavaScript and come into the browser and go into this, we can see this is all of our JSON and it's just looped through it all. So now coming back here, I've added in an I accidentally. So that's looping through all of the JSON. And we can also reference individual properties. So we could say turtle.type. So turtle on the first iteration will be this object here, which is the green turtle object, which has a, a property called type. So we can reference turtle.type and it will just print out the type of every bit of data 
or the type property on every bit of data. So if we save that, we can come back into the browser and it will just print out the type of each bit of JSON. So now armed with that knowledge, we can create the markup for each of these little boxes. So we're going to use Bootstrap to style it. So what we want to do is have a box that takes up half the width. And then inside that, we want an image that takes up half of that box and then the data take up the other half. And then when we get down to small sizes, small size screens, we want the box to take up the full width, the image to take up the full width of the box and the data to take up the full width. So if I make it smaller here, so the box goes full width, the image goes full width and the data goes full width. So bring that up to maximize and come back into our HTML and I'll delete this paragraph because we want to create it using bootstrap. So we'll start off by creating a bootstrap row and then inside here we'll create a column that breaks at small sizes and we make it six, which is half size, which is what we wanted each of these rows to be. And then inside here is where we put the bootstrap well, which is the gray box uh, that you can see in here. So each of these gray boxes is called a well in bootstrap. So coming back into here, this is where we put our well. So this is the markup that we want to repeat. So on here, we can add in our ng repeat equals, and then we can just do turtle in list dot data, just like we did before. And then from here we can say well, and then we want a small well. And then like we said, we want the image and the data to split half half on big screen. So we'll create another row and then we'll create a call MD. So it breaks at medium sizes and we'll make it six again to so make it half. And we want two of these because we want one for the image and then one for the data. So in here we'll create the image and we will forget about the alt tag, but we'll give it some classes, some bootstrap classes. We'll give it image rounded just to make each like the, the corners of the image rounded and then image responsive because we want it to resize. And then in here is where we will put all of the, the information about each turtle. So we'll put the, the name of each turtle in an H4. So the name is going to be turtle.type. So turtle again is from this ng repeat. So it's each iteration. And then we're referencing the type property. And then below here, we want a paragraph tag. Inside that, we want a strong tag. And we will say locations. And that's where our locations location will be printed out and the location is turtle dot locations still using that angular binding and then we want another paragraph with another strong tag and this time we will say size and you'll see the, the pattern from here so it's going to be the same so we create the binding turtle dot size and then a p tag, a strong tag, average lifespan. And then we'll give ourselves some more, some more room. And we'll come back up into here and create the angular binding again, turtle dot lifespan this time. And then the P last time strong and this one is diet. The angular binding turtle dot diet. Save. And then we come back into our browser. And there you go. We've got our title, location, size, average lifespan, and diet. So now we need to add in the image and the button down in the corner. So to add the image, 
we need a new Angular directive. So typically with an image, you have a source attribute, and then inside the source you put wherever your image is coming from. But the problem is, as soon as the page loads, it's going to try fetch that source URL. But that source URL is in our turtle data here. So we're going to have to reference it by using Angular binding. So we use that and then it's going to be turtle dot image underscore URL. But that of course isn't uh, a URL, this literal string of the double curly braces turtle dot image URL, that's not a valid URL. So the browser isn't going to know what to do with it and it's just going to return nothing. So to get around that, Angular have given us a directive called ng source. So obviously when the browser loads, ng source means nothing to the browser, so it's just going to skip it. But then when Angular hooks onto the page, it's going to see the ng source, evaluate this, get the actual URL, which is in here, and then fetch it and then display that. So now if we save here, go back into the browser, there we go, we've got the image on each of these looking nice. So now we can add in the button on the bottom right. So head back into here and the button goes below all of these paragraph tags. So it's just a button tag and inside here we'll say learn more. And then we'll give it some bootstrap classes to style it. So we'll give it the class of button button primary and we want it on the right hand side so we'll also give it the class of pull right and we'll save that hop back into the browser and there we go so now we can click these and they do nothing but in the next video we're going to take a look at how we can listen for those click events and then do something based on all of those click events. And also one other thing that we'll do is correct these images. So right now you can see these images are different sizes. So we'll add some custom CSS to make sure that they're all uniform sizes. For those of you that haven't checked out my website yet, I do a full article write-up for every single video that I put out on YouTube and that will include code snippets and other little things that will help you along. The link to the write-up for the current video is on the bottom left of the screen. And if you just want to continue watching this video series, then just click the link in the center of the screen and we'll get started with the next video.